morning and welcome to worship. As you can see, I am recording today from our sanctuary. It's been a long time since I've done that and I'm excited to be here. Excited to tell you that even though our reopening team made a decision last week to not reopen on September 5th because of the Delta variant and the way that it's spreading, after much prayer and consideration and consultation with our trustees, we have decided that we will open the sanctuary on September 5th for a hybrid worship experience. That means if you'd like to join us in person for worship, we welcome you to come. We will be worshiping with masks and socially distanced. We will also require each person or each family to fill out a contact tracing sheet. But we're excited for the opportunity to come back together. If you're not comfortable worshiping in person, we invite you to join us either via Facebook Live or via Zoom. We will have both vehicles um, with us on September 5th and going forward, and we will um, be providing a worship experience for those who are unable to worship with us in person. We're just grateful for the work that our trustees have done. They, as they said to me yesterday, oh, we're prepared. So we will move forward and see what the Holy Spirit does. I want to remind you that our theme coming back in September, the quest, the journey home after COVID, and I am inviting any person who'd like to give a testimony, either in person or by video, please reach out to me by phone, text, or email, and let me know that that's what you want to do so that I can include you in our worship service. I want to say thank you, as always, to Jason Belt and Brian Jenkins, who work hard every week to see that worship gets report, recorded edited and uploaded so that we can be edified through our worship. I'm so excited to announce that we are receiving an intern from Wesley Theological Seminary. Her name is Minister Nicole Smith. She is a CLM and a member of Queens Chapel United Methodist Church. Some of you, I'm sure, already know her, and she has preached at Mount Zion at least once to my knowledge. I'm excited because having interns and mentoring students is near and dear to my heart. I'm excited that we become, not just me, but our congregation becomes a teaching congregation and we will receive gifts that Nicole brings to the table, but we will also impart gifts as she con continues on her journey toward ordination. I invite her to introduce herself. Hello, Mount Zion Harwood Charge. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. My name is Nicole Smith, and I'm a student at Wesley Theological Seminary. I will be working with your churches this upcoming year as a part of an internship at the seminary. The Reverend Dr. Cynthia Belt, your senior pastor, will serve as my mentor. My home church is Queens Chapel United Methodist Church in Beltville, Maryland. There, the senior pastor is Reverend Dr. William Butler. But I am excited and look forward to working with you all this upcoming year. Some of my areas of interest are evangelism, pastoral care, Bible study, and stewardship. Hopefully, this coming year, we can delve into those areas and grow in Christian discipleship. It has been a difficult time in our history. We are in the midst of a pandemic, even still. But we have to learn even in the midst of difficulties, to be at work in God's vineyard. And that is why I look forward to meeting and greeting each and every one of you. 
until we meet. May the peace and blessings of the Lord be with you. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. People of God, let's worship the Lord our God with our whole heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and all of our strength. Let's give the worship to God that's due to God alone and bring glory to God's name. Let's sing praises to God our maker and bless God's name. Amen. Join me in a word of prayer as we pray for those among us that are dealing with grief and loss, for those among us that are dealing with illness and pain, those among us that are dealing with anxiety and fear. We pray for our nation, we pray for our leadership, and we pray for those persons that are in Afghanistan that are American citizens and allies, and for the citizens of Afghanistan as they adjust to this transition. We're praying that God's peace might be upon them all. Let's pray. God of love and grace and mercy, we pray for your love and compassion to abound as we walk through this challenging season. We lift up those among us who are dealing with grief and loss, asking that you be the God of all comfort in their lives. We ask for wisdom for those who bear the load of making decisions with widespread consequences. We pray for all those who are suffering with sickness and those who care for them. We ask your protection for the elderly and the vulnerable so that they don't succumb to the risk of this virus. We lift up the persons, the citizens of Afghanistan, those American and allied citizens that are there trying to get out. Lord God, we're asking that your hand of protection be around them all. We pray, God, for misinformation to be heard, that fear might not take hold of our hearts and our minds. We pray, Lord God, that you give us the ability to discern truth from fiction, to discern genuine care for fake care, and to discern what is right in your sight. As we exercise the good sense that you in your mercy provide, may we also approach each day in faith and in peace, trusting in the truth that your steadfast love surrounds us and guides us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 21 through 24. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go, select lambs for your families, and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood of the lamb that's in the basin, and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood in the basin. None of you shall go outside the door of your house until morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike down the Egyptians. When God sees the blood on the top post and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over that door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you down. Once the Lord has delivered you, you will observe this right as a perpetual ordinance for you and your children. This is the word of God for the people of God. And the people said, thanks be to God. Pray with me as we consider the topic this morning. I know it was the blood. God, in these challenging times, we come to you first to say thank you for being a big God in our lives. Thanking you that even when things seem impossible for us, they are possible for you. So calm our minds and our spirits as we encounter your word, that we might be empowered by how your word ministers to us. 
that your word might take fruit, that it might bear fruit, and go out and do the very thing that you intend for it to do. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. To whom do you attribute your success? Is it your education, your income, your family connections? Do you attribute your success to your own hard work? Everyone attributes their success or sometimes failure to one influence or another. How did we survive 2020 and how will we succeed in surviving 2021 and beyond? Do we believe that our excellent health has kept us thus far? Do we believe that our bank accounts or our support systems or our family connections kept the COVID-19 virus from ravaging us? Well, in response to the question, to whom do you, do you attribute your success? I paraphrase the psalmist in Psalm 124. If God hadn't been on our side, all together now, saints, if God hadn't been for us when everything seemed to be against us, we would have been swallowed alive. We would have been swept away by the ravages of COVID-19, drowned in the torrent of racism and political unrest. We would have lost our lives in the wild, raging wildfires, the unrelenting heat, the floods, the hurricanes, and the tornadoes. We would have been left in despair by wars and rumors of wars. But oh, blessed be our God, who didn't go off and leave us, who didn't abandon us and leave us defenseless. God's strong name is our help, the same God who made heaven and earth. But the psalmist knew, and what we know, is that the source of our success is nothing but the grace of God. Nothing but the grace of God can account for our overwhelming success in just surviving from one day to the next. Nothing but the grace of God can account for the fact that we are still here. And so when it comes to our salvation, we know it's not our church affiliation, our denomination, or our service. It's not how we serve in the church or how loudly we shout or how good we can sing or how profoundly we preach. Salvation comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. The text that I read is a familiar text to many of us. It is the institution of the Passover. The children of Israel have been slaves in Egypt, and now deliverance is coming. The people had suffered hardship as slaves. They endured much and they suffered long, yet deliverance was right here, for God, God's self, stood ready to answer their prayers for deliverance. Moses commanded each family to kill a lamb and to paint their doorposts of their homes with its blood. It was promised that prior to the deliverance, they were to eat a sacrificial lamb and then wait for God's death angel to pass. Those who were securely behind a doorpost that was covered with the blood on all three sides would be saved from the coming death. However, those outside of this protection would experience the death of their firstborn sons. There was much fear as the death angel passed and the firstborn of Egypt and Goshen died unless the blood of the lamb was stained on their doors. Those inside were safe, safe in the arms of their Lord. Thereafter, that night was celebrated as the Passover so all could remember how God's death passed them over, and how God, God's self, showed them mercy. We have something in common with the children of Israel, in that we too have experienced a season where the death angel seems to have been on a rampage. 
But for Israel, the blood over the doorpost and the side post was more than just lamb's blood on a doorway. The blood meant that when trouble came, they would be under the protection of God, God's self. In the same way, those of us who have been covered under the blood of the Lamb, who have put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, have been protected from the ravages of the death angel. Am I saying that we won't die? No, I'm not. But what I'm saying is that our souls are secure regardless of what happens around us. We rejoice in the truth that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. The blood also represents God's provision. They were about to take a journey without knowing how long it would take or how they would be fed. Think about how we felt last year in March when the lockdown started and we began to understand the severity of the COVID-19 virus. We were afraid. We didn't know what would happen next. We didn't know how long it would take for things to get back to normal and we're still wondering. But just like the Israelites, we're counting on the power of God to provide for us and to see us through. Just as Israel carried with them what they could, we today should do the same. We can't hold on to those things that hinder us from having a good and intimate relationship with our God. The writer of Hebrews said that we should lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily trips us up. In the same way, God calls us in this moment to be under the blood, to revel in the protection that we have in Jesus Christ, understanding that all the things that weigh us down, we can turn over to God. For God cares for us. The scripture talks about God caring for the sparrow and how much more God cares for us. The blood also represents God's revelation. Under, under the protection of the blood in Goshen, the Israelites received instruction that was, in fact, a revelation. They were told of their coming deliverance, and it was a welcome revelation. Because of the blood of Christ, we can also expect a revelation of things to come. In fact, the scripture says that there's going to come a day when death shall be no more. Sickness and illness shall be no more, but we will have our complete victory in Jesus Christ. No matter how difficult the time, the blood of Christ has assured us the victory. God has revealed to us in the very ways that God has provided for us. As a matter of fact, God's word tells us that God cares for us and makes provision for us. No wonder the songwriter declares, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. The blood of Jesus Christ gives us the assurance that the cause of the kingdom of God will ultimately be victorious. It doesn't matter about the ravages of this world. God guarantees us victory in Jesus Christ. Finally, sisters and brothers, we must remember that we owe our lives and our salvation to the blood of Christ. There's no other source to which we can attribute our hope. That's why the songwriter says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. The solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Oh, some of us may attribute our success in making it through from 2020 to today on our education and the fact that we kept ourselves informed. But I know it was the blood of the Lamb. Some of us may think that our hard work bought us safe thus far, but I know it was the blood of the Lamb. Some may envision 
that it is our own good fortune that kept us to this point, but I know it was the blood of the Lamb. There are some things in this world that we cannot attain without the blood. For there is a fountain, the script, the songwriter says, that's filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. But we can't drink from the fountain unless we are under the blood. There are promises in scripture that we can't claim, but the power of the blood allows us to claim those promises. There is a hope that we can't enjoy, but the power of the blood allows us to enjoy that hope. The songwriter asked the question, what can wash away my sin? And then the songwriter answered the question, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me bright as snow. No other fact I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. When you've been washed in the blood, you sing with new meaning. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood saved me. I know it was the blood that took my hatred and turned it into love. I know it was the blood that took my despair and turned it into hope. I know it was the blood that took my disgrace and turned it into honor. I know it was the blood that took my enemies and turned them into friends. I know it was the blood that took my worries and turned them into confidence. For one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood saved me. Amen. If you are joining us today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I invite you to give Jesus your heart. For honestly, it's nothing but the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ shed for the forgiveness of sin for you and for me and indeed for the whole world. And God calls us to be in community. So if you're joining us and you don't have a church home, consider uniting with this body of believers. Mount Zion is a church committed to making disciples for Jesus Christ and empowering God's people to do God's ministry. If you're with us today and you'd like prayer, please leave us a note in the comments and we will pray for you. If you have a need, leave us a note in the comments and we'll reach out to you. Also, if you made a decision for Christ or you want to join with this body of believers, please leave us a note and someone from our ministry team will reach out to you. For Mount Zion loves you, but know that God loves you best. Let's prepare our hearts for the benediction. Go forth as God's anointed, covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. Go forth as those who are loved by God, who are a part of God's family. Go forth utilizing the gifts of the spirit that God gives you for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. Amen.